Hello and welcome to episode two of my factorial megabase tutorial and theory series. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again. Uh, today we're going to look in depth at a factorial calculator, show and explain the effects of modules and why I recommend using them, and take a look at using creative mode or the editor in game to test builds and designs uh, before you actually place them and integrate them into your megabase. So this episode is still going to be, I suppose, some of the planning phase, but we are actually going to play around with some builds and sh show some different effects of uh, one thing uh, contrasting to another uh, in game. But we're gonna start with the factorial calculator here. I mentioned this in the end of my first episode. Definitely check that episode out before uh, this one if you haven't seen it yet, it's in the playlist. And uh, I said I would go in depth in, in this. And I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna show you this one. And the reason for this is that I've already done a spotlight on factor, uh, factory planner mod, uh, where I explain it pretty decently. I think I, I did a pretty good job of showing off uh, at least most of its main features. So you can definitely check out that spotlight on my channel. I think I actually did two for that. Um, there's a really older one, like a couple years old, and then a newer one. Um, definitely check out the newer one. And uh, that should explain that pretty well. There is also a hell mod, which I mentioned last episode. I haven't really used it much. I'm personally not a fan of it. Um, so I just, I'm not really qualified to sh to like explain it to you. Um, factory, factorial lab, or sorry, this is what this, yeah. Factorial lab, factorial calculator, calculator um, I think is the best one out there that is not an in-game mod. Um, there is Kirk McDonald and some other ones. Um, Kirk McDonald's very similar setup to this, uh, but this one I think is more up to date. It's just a little smoother, cleaner to use. So we're gonna show you this. So you come here, I'll, again, link in the description for this. And this is where we're gonna plan out what we wanna do for our megabase. Now, last episode, I covered some ideas you could go over and how to figure out what you may want your goal to be. Uh, obviously, your goal can be what I'm showing you here. I'm just, I'm, I've already chosen what I'm gonna do for an example throughout the series. However, um, yours can be different or if you want to just follow along and do what I'm doing, that works too. Um, so you can add a product. Uh, you can start off by choosing a rate at which you want to do whatever this is you're doing, uh, per second, per minute, or per hour. Uh, we're going to do per minute. I just personally prefer that. I think it's cleaner. I think that's how most people um, who do like a per time period rate uh, base stuff off of, at least everyone I've built a mega base with, we do a per minute rate. Um, I just think it's easier. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, and then you add a product. And for this series, I'm going to be doing a thousand science per minute of every science um, for the demonstration in this series. And I'm doing that for a couple reasons. Uh, first off, it's a very clean number. And I think in, you know, in my opinion, it's kind of the threshold where you pass from just a large base to a mega base. I think that you know, it can vary. Everyone has their own opinions. My opinion certainly is not, you know, doesn't, isn't, isn't like the, the uh, end all be all for this, but just, I have, I think I would have others agree with me as well. Um, I think a thousand signs per minute is where you pass into being a mega base. Um, it could be 900, it could be 500. We're just going to do a thousand um, for this. You can certainly do more if you want to just start with 500. You're more than welcome to, and you can tweak these numbers. Uh, you know, and this, these principles will show. So we're just gonna start adding science packs. So we click what we want, and we now have this. And there's a lot of information here, but let's start up here. So we wanna make sure we're on a per minute rate. Um, now, once you add it, you do have the option of doing factories, wagons a minute, or belts. And I wanna mention, I wanna to touch on the belts, uh, because in the comments of last video, someone mentioned they prefer using belts as a rate. Um, I think using belts as a rate is excellent if you plan, if you've already, you should have hopefully already decided if you're doing a belt base or bot base at this point. Um, but I think belts are fantastic if you want to do a belt rate, um, if you're building a belt mega base. Other than that, I do not like using belts, and, and I'll explain that in a second. So if you want to do, say, just a yellow belt permit or just a yellow belt of science, um, you can get close to the thousand science. So this is an option if you kind of want to follow along. If you're just like, I want to build a belt base, um, you can just do belts. You can see it set on the belt and one yellow belt of science is 900 per minute. It's close. You can do fractions of a belt, um, but this is part of the reason I don't like doing belts um, unless I'm just doing a very straightforward, like a yellow belt 
of science per minute or a red belt or two like multiples of a whole number because sure we could get close so we do like 1.2 we're close, we're a little over a thousand science per minute, but then when you build it, it's like, how are you gonna build to output one and then 0 0.2 of a belt? Um, it just makes things harder. I mean, it can be done, certainly, um, but I just like sticking to whole numbers in belts, and if you wanna build a belt base, this is fantastic. If you wanna build a bot base or belt and like combined hybrid base, um, this is just gonna be a nightmare in my experience. You know, belt rates are, in my opinion, kind of useless if you're using bots because you're obviously not using belts. So, you know, I, I wouldn't want to base my science off of one yellow belt if I'm using bots for my entire base because I won't even be using belts. Um, so I just want to use the minute rate. Um, again, if you want to use belts and you plan to build a belt base, then you can do this. And if you want to get close to kind of the uh, example I'm doing in this series, one yellow belt is pretty close. Um, a red belt is going to be quite a bit more because uh, it's twice the speed here. Um, it's going to be about like 1,800 science per minute. Um, but if you want to do that, feel free, or blue belt. So we're going to do items a minute. And then we add what we want. So for this, we're just going to type 1,000. Type whatever number you plan to do here. And we're doing this. And then we can just go ahead and add all of our other stuff. So I'm going to add everything first and then tweak it. And luckily, this defaults to the per minute rate. So we don't have to change all these. And we just type in here. I know there's gonna be a lot of things down below, but we'll take a look at these. And then the last one is gonna be space science, which they've kind of stuck in the unsorted section here. Um, and then we're gonna do a thousand of this. And there we go. Okay, so uh, this is a little confusing to look at. But we're going to get into that. Uh, before we continue, I do want to show off the settings because there are some things here we need to look at. You can see in mine, it's defaulting to uh, a ceiling machine threes, full of productivity modules where applicable, and then speed modules where productivity modules can't be used. Um, and then uh, beacons and eight beacons set up with two speed modules in each beacon. And that's because of what I've set in my settings. So. I've chosen eight, eight beacons as a preset. You can choose minimum, you can choose modules. If you wanted 12 beacons, um, which can be very good, nothing wrong with 12 beacons, especially for belt builds. I actually kind of prefer 12 beacon builds um, for belt builds. Um, and uh, you can choose that and then it will just default to that. And then when you, you, you go in here, so you can click this and uh, it, the, the level three isn't here because we've chosen it, but you can set this to whatever you want as your default. Uh, for Megabase, I think you shouldn't be using anything other than level threes unless you're specifically doing a challenge of like, do a Megabase with only level one assemblers. And if that's the case, set this to level one assemblers and you're off to the races. Um, but if you're just planning on doing just straightforward like this series is gonna be a thousand science per minute, Level threes are what you're going to want. You're going to want the highest tier of everything possible. Uh, same with this, electric furnaces, unless you're doing a specific thing to your factory, which is completely fine. Nothing wrong. If you just want to be like, I want to do a thousand signs per minute, but I want to use uh, steel furnaces, you know, like I want to use burner furnaces. Go for it, and you can just set that in here. Again, for this, I just want to use the highest tier possible of everything. Um, and electric mining drills, obviously default same deal there and then uh, modules um, we're using speed models and everything again the next sec section of this video is going to cover modules the effects of them and why i think you should always use them wherever possible um this is deep just leave this default i would say the pipe flow rate um columns and precision uh units per minute you can change this if you would like um like you can just get rid of belts if you want um wagons, beacons, power. I would just leave all this, honestly, because the nice thing is, even if you do a per minute rate, it's still going to show you belts. So you, it, you can still do belts, you know, this, uh, you know, if, even if you want to build a belt base, if you still want to use a per minute rate, you certainly can. And it will be, you know, a belt rate, which is like what I showed you earlier. Base set, uh, this is the game version. Uh, basically, you can add in mods as well. This series is not going to be modded. Um, just leave it there. Disabled, one recipe, um, just leave that default, I would say difficulty, leave normal, that's not 
we don't want to do expensive stuff. And research speed, you want max research speed. Um, I would hope that at this point you would have researched all your lab speed upgrades. Uh, inserter capacity, I hope you would have got those. Uh, if you do have a mining productivity bonus at this point, uh, which I think maybe you would have a couple. Um, I forget at what point they transition to getting really expensive or needing space science. But if we say we have, let's just say we have four of these. Um, really all that's going to change is the miners. Um, but we'll just add that in. So um, we're actually going to do 40%. This isn't a percent. Um, so each level adds 10%. Um, so four levels would be 40%. And there we go. Simplex solver. Um, I just want this enable. I just want this as is. And then we can uh, close these settings. Make sure it kept our settings there. So yeah, this just closes it. Don't trash it unless you want to trash it. Um, and you can also save this as well. Uh, but if we just look at this, uh, so you can break these down. Um, if you click this little arrow here, you can break this down, and this is just going to show you a little more of a breakdown. The science is very simple, uh, red science particularly, but um, if we look at like inserters, sources, I mean, it's basically showing you uh, what this is showing you. You can look at the recipe itself, like everything it takes. Um, you can look at the factory setup for this if you'd like. Um, so, you know, this is going into this, which makes this, and then outputs that. Um, really you know, at this point, if you've got to a mega base, you probably would already know the recipes for most of these things, um, you know, or understand how the recipes for things work, I would hope so. Um, so probably don't necessarily need to look at that. Uh, usually, like when I use these, I don't really do much expansion past this, um, except to see, like, what, like, maybe how much of, like, copper or iron is going towards um, a certain part of something. Um, so that, you know, could be good, like seeing that, oh, well, this much cable goes to red circuits out of the, you know, so this much cable out of all my cable goes to red circuits. You could look at, like, I do use this to, to look at things like that. Um, and it will even tell me here, like, how many cargo wagons that is, which is cool. Uh, you can also get rid of items. So if, if you want to just, like, isolate out items, um, for example, if you say, for some reason, you don't want to see blue circuits, in this, you can just get rid of it. Um, and you can undo that, of course, by clicking on it. Uh, and then really what we want to look at, I like starting, and I'll show you this when we get into game, um, kind of, but I like starting from the ground up. So right now, again, this is, this is kind of overwhelming. Right now, I, we don't even want to worry about this. Like, I'm just, I mean, you can see how many factories this takes. That's great. This is good information to know. We will need this. Um, you know, this is the number of factories, so you're going to need 10.9 factories fully moduled and beaconed um, to make red science. Um, I want to start at the very beginning where we make plate. And then from there, we work up to the next ingredients, steel, circuits, gears, etc. And then we go to red circuits. And then we go to blue circuits, oil. I build my science last. So I work... Uh, I guess you could say backwards, but really I think it's forwards. Uh, you know, I, I start from the very beginning. I, I make all my smelting first for my builds, and then I make the next thing up, which in my opinion is like circuits and gears and steel, which I guess, you know, it's, that's a smelter too. But if you get the idea, is I, I go that way. I don't even want to worry about this right now. If I just try to look at this as a whole, it is very overwhelming. Um, you know, it's like, well, where do you start? I like to start at, at the beginning. Um, now, one quick note here. Wherever you see partial numbers, I highly recommend you always round up. Um, so in this case, build 11 factories doing red science. In this case, well, you can't build half of one, so I just build one factory for uh, inserters. Um, this case, build 16. I know it's a large rounding to round up from this, but the thing is, to match, if you want purple science to match, you need 15.2. Well, you can't build 15.2. If you round down to 15, purple science is not going to match the rest of your sciences. It will be slightly behind, and that will throw everything off. If you round up, yes, you will overproduce it, but if you build your labs based on what this tells you to, to only consume 1,000 science per minute, 
the overproduction won't really matter um, if you build your builds correctly so it doesn't like back up and mess something up in the, in the supply chain. Um, so always round up. Same with this. Build, um, build three assemblers making electric furnaces because, again, round up. You get the point. Always round up. Because uh, if you round down, things going to be underproduced, and that just throws off everything. Um, so we can come down here, and we're going to start down at the bottom in the beginning. We want to look at the iron and the copper and probably the steel, depending on how we want to do the steel. So if we want to do 1,000 science of every science per minute, we need 75,622 iron a minute. Uh, rounding up. Uh, now this... You could round up the number to 76,000. Um, I'm just, I would just round up the machines, especially because it gives me an even number of machines. Um, so I would round up to 358 furnaces. And then same deal here, I'd round up, uh, probably round up two for this. If be, Just because uh, a lot of builds are going to have symmetry regardless if you build belt or bot. Um, so having an extra one can just be a little weird if that doesn't bother you or it's not gonna cause an issue in your builds then you could just round up one more to 277 in this case. Um, I would personally round up to 278. Again, a little overproduction as long as you build your builds, and we'll show you, I'll show you all this, as long as you build your builds in such a way where a backup, like an overproduction isn't going to just like stop a whole supply chain through backup, um, then it doesn't really hurt to overproduce a little bit. Like two extra furnaces in the grand scheme of this number is so minimal it it won't even really be noticeable except much easier to build um so these would be the first things you would want to work on um and that's going to do it for the calculator section of this video i think it's already a little long you can of course um you can put these in new tabs as well if you just want to look at specific things um you can change if again if you want to do 12 beacons if you want to do 12 beacons on just some things that's totally viable you can totally do that like Let's say, for example, you want eight beacons on all your smelters and stuff, but your circuits, you're having a hard time figuring out an eight beacon belt build. Um, if you just want to do 12 beacons, just change this number on the circuits, and and there you go. And it's going to adjust accordingly. So you can see this is 24. We'll round up 25 assemblers using 12 beacons. If we go back down to eight, it's going to be 35. So you can change if you just want to, if you want to mix, you certainly can mix. I've done it before. If you want to do eight beacons in some parts, factory 12 in other parts, um, as long as you're changing it, um, the output should still stay the same because um, we haven't actually changed. You can see this number is not changing and that's what's important. Um, we haven't changed the number of signs per minute we're making. We've just changed the layout of the build and then this will automatically change to accommodate that so there you go hopefully this was helpful for the calculator section we're now going to move into game and i'm going to briefly describe and just show you some examples of the effects of modules if you don't know them some of you a lot of you maybe probably already know about modules and, and know that you would want to use them if you don't though i am going to demonstrate why i highly recommend modules um and using them uh you'd be surprised though the amount of people who want to go build a mega base and um ask like why do I need to use modules or I don't understand the reasoning for putting productivity modules in machines because it slows it down um, and that's fine like I'm not criticizing like you know if, you, if when I was newer to the game and before I built my first big bases I didn't have a clue on modules I was like these things suck um, they're insanely good actually so I'll cover that briefly in the next part of this video and I will see you shortly Alrighty, welcome back. Uh, we are in game here at this time to show off uh, the effects of modules, how powerful they are, and why I always recommend using them wherever possible. Uh, so we have two different builds here. Uh, they're both making circuits, and they are both uh, built with a goal in mind of creating 10,000 circuits per minute. So I built these for this test, and uh, they each make 10,000 circuits per minute. Uh, and we're going to look at three metrics on these. We're going to look at power consumption, size, and resources consumed. Okay, so we have this one running. Uh, the other one is not because it will interfere with our production number since we can't have separate production charts um, for builds uh, without a mod. Um, so first thing we want to look at is production. I'd say that's probably the most important. And we'll notice here it is uh, it fluctuates a little bit, but if we look at a one-minute average, it is 10K 
uh, green circuits per minute uh, on average. So this one here produces 10K per minute. This is completely unbeaconed, unmodeled. Okay, so it's making 10,000 circuits per minute. Uh, it's also, if we look here, it's consuming 15,000 copper per minute and 10,000 iron per minute. Okay, so we need to keep those in mind. So 10,000 iron, 15,000 copper, uh, 10 to 15. And we're just going to visually take a look at this. Look at the size of this. Uh, we'll discount the robo ports. These are just here so the chests aren't flashing with a no robo network thing. Um, but the size of the build itself is just the build without the robo ports. Um, because you know you may or may not use that you may be using belts uh now in terms of using belts this is of course would be a bot build um you know this is set up to be a bot build um so i suppose maybe you could include like one row robo ports um you, you certainly can do this with belts i think belts would be about the same potentially even bigger than this i made this as compact as i could uh you know you may be able to do some tweaking to make it even more compact uh but I'm not even sure you can achieve this level of compactness with belts. Um, maybe with some underground weaving and stuff you could. Uh, I'd say I would be very impressed if it would be smaller than this using belts. Um, so it's either going to be bigger or about the same size um, for a non-beacon, non-moduled version of this. Okay, and the last metric we want to look at for this is the power consumption. Uh, we want to take note here that uh, this is consuming an average of about 84 and a half, 84 ish um, megawatts here. Okay, so there's that bill. Okay, and this is, you know, it, it's decent. It's not huge for 10,000, but it's pretty good size. So I'm going to cut the power to this one. And we're going to move down to this one. And look at the difference. You can instantly notice the size difference. And keeping in mind that this one also produces 10,000 circuits per minute. And this one is, of course, beacon and modulated. So if we take this, if we take a copy of this, uh, we can see this is probably about, uh, about a third, even less than a third, the size of this one here. This one is probably about three and a half times the size of this one for the same amount of production. Look how small this is for producing 10,000 circuits per minute. Again, I've used the same technique basically um, here, a different arrangement because the ratios change. And we'll touch on the ratios here in a second. Um, so this is full productivity in the circuit machines and the wire machines, and then speed beacons to offset the slowdown of productivity. And really, I think the size speak, I mean, it, it speaks for itself. It's significantly smaller. Uh, also, if we take a look at the power consumption, this does consume more power, but not that much. Like, look how much of a smaller build you're gonna have and consuming less resources, which we'll touch on next, for really only about 30 megawatts more. This is 115, the other one was about 84 and a half. Um, so for about, 50, for about 30 megawatts more, which in the late game when you have nuclear or just mass solar is like negligible, um, you get a significantly smaller build. You also get a overall, um, I don't know if cheaper is the right word, I, I would say, but you, you do consume far less resources. Because if we look at production now, over the last minute, again, 10,000 science, or sorry, 10,000 circuits per minute here for just this build, this one's off. And look at this difference. So this one consumed, the one above consumed 15,000 copper per minute. This one consumes 7.7, .7, nearly half the amount, a little bit more than half the amount of copper. And this one above consumed 10,000 iron per minute, and this one consumes 7.2 thousand. Um, so the one above consumes almost twice as much copper, um, and then about 3,000, a little less than 3,000 more iron per minute. And, and guys, you gotta, we, we have to consider, this is a per minute rate. It's easy to look at this and be like, oh, okay, well, I mean, that's great. It's, you know, this one consumes twice as much copper, seven and a half thousand more copper and three and a half thousand more iron. But this is every single minute. This is per minute. So yes, there is a greater upfront cost to build builds with modules and beacons uh, because you have to obviously build the beacons and the modules, which are quite expensive. But that is a one-time cost for the build. Uh, you know, I guess there's a cost for the extra power it takes. But again, that's very negligible. Um, and... Uh, you know, so there's that, but once you've built these, like, and you built, and you put them down and stuff, the cost is, is, uh, final for these, you know, for the modules and the beacons. However, this will quickly pay for that. Like, this will quickly 
compensate for that because every single minute compared to a non-moduled beacon build, you're, you're every single minute you're consuming that much less resources. Um, you know, over 10 minutes, the one above has already consumed 10 or 70,000 more copper and about 30,000 more iron. And that's in 10 minutes, folks. That's pretty ridiculous. Okay. Now I didn't do a speeded build, uh, speed modeled and speed beacon build for a few reasons. Um, and uh, first, before we get into that, though, I just want to touch on ratios. The one up here is a different build, uh, obviously, because there's no beacons, but it's um, it's a different ratio too. This one is just your standard three to two ratio, three cable machines to two circuit machines, because you know the machines are faster because they're a higher level machine, but you know overall the ratio is the same as if you were using level one or level two machines because they're all the same. Um, so this is a three to two, and I've built it that way. This one down here, though, when you add in productivity modules to this, to both, and speed beacon it, this becomes very close to a one-to-one -one ratio. Not quite, but it's close enough to be able to build it into a one-to-one -one ratio and have it work basically perfectly. There's a slight delay in there, but it's close enough. Um, yeah, I, I mean, as you can see, it still produces the same amount as the one above. So this is a one-to-one -one ratio. If you were to speed module the machines and speed beacon, um, it would maintain the ratios uh, of this one uh, because you're not adding in like this free productivity amount, which quote unquote throws it off, changes the ratio. Um, you're basically just making everything equally faster. Um, so if you were to speed module the machines as well, it would maintain a three to two ratio. The reason I didn't build a speed module build is because I, I just... I'm gonna flat out say you just should not do that. I don't really like telling people do this, do that. Even for this, I, I'm just recommending you use modules and beacons trying to show you why. But if you're gonna use modules, if a item can take productivity modules, not all items can obviously, only intermediates. But if it can take productivity modules, I really, really recommend using those. Um, because if you use a speed modeled and beacon build, it's going to be about the same as this. I calculated it takes maybe two or three more assemblers total than this build for the same amount of production. It's going to be about the same size. Um, however, it's going to be a lot more expensive because you still have the upfront costs, even a little more because it's slightly more machines, but it's not actually consuming any less resources than this one. If they're both producing 10,000 circuits per minute. A speed modeled version of this is going to consume materials at the same rate as this one because you're not getting that productivity you're not getting those free output um you know this free output look how like look how fast every single one of these is a free circuit basically um so that i, I just don't think it's good I, I would just almost flat out say just don't use speed modules and anything that can be productivity obviously things like gears um you know gears can be productivity and stuff like that but you know things like belts and inserters can't so obviously you'll have to use speed modules and we'll show that when we go farther into the series um but there's that there's my demonstration of these hopefully that you know got the point across and then i want to quickly move into uh showing off the creative mod uh if you're going to test builds um I would highly recommend having a separate world, a separate save, you know, kind of like I have here, where you build your builds with either creative mod uh, or like the editor and cheat mode and vanilla if you don't want to use a mod, um, and then blueprint them, and then you can just import the blueprint into your actual play world where you're building your mega base. Uh, because I just don't like putting this into my actual play world. Uh, it can throw some things off in my experience, and, and I think just having a separate open world um, just for testing builds is really good. Uh, now, if you do want to just, if you actually just want to build your mega base, you know, with creative mod and just so you're not actually making all the materials to build the builds, um, you know, go for it. That's not what I would do. Um, I personally don't like doing that. Uh, but I think, you know, everyone has their own style and their own preferences. And if you don't want to just sit there and build up a bajillion assemblers and modules and stuff, if you want to build the factory with creative mod, I don't have anything against that. Uh, it's not my personal play preference, but you know, definitely go for it. I've reviewed bases and toured bases that do that, and I think that's completely fine. Because um, a lot of people will do that, and then they'll let the base run legitimately. Legitimately, like they will set up outposts and have trains running and all that. Not use like creative chests or anything like I'm doing here. They'll just build the builds 
so they're not having to make the materials to make the builds essentially. Um, so jumping into Creative Mod, uh, this one here, I'll put a link in the description for this. This is an excellent mod for testing builds. I would, if you don't mind using mods, I would recommend using this over uh, the editor. Uh, just because this gives you so many options. It adds in this menu here. And when you enter a game with this, a new game, a new save with this on for the first time, um, it will pop up a little like dialogue thing in the middle of your screen. It's going to ask if you want it on. It's going to give you several options like turn on, like no, no permanently, or yes, like turn on with cheats. Um, I recommend doing the thing, the one with cheats for this purpose because that's what's going to give you like this menu and these other tools I'm going to show you. And this just gives you so many things to play around with. I'm not going to cover everything. I don't want this to be too long. Uh, but it gives you things like all these creative chests. And that's what I'm using here. Um, so here, you'll notice there's no actual bots doing anything in here. There aren't any, period. Um, I'm using these uh, creative autofill requester chests. So these autofill requester chests. And what they will do is they will just infinitely fill whatever I request. So you set it as if it's a normal requester chest. And then it will just infinitely generate those materials. Um, and then combined with that for the output, I'm using these void chests and it will instantly basically disintegrate whatever's put into them. So it doesn't fill up and the, and the build stops running. Cause if you want to do a long test, um, you know, and it fills up and then stops, it's kind of annoying. Um, so this will be really good. Similar to that, we have duplicating chests that will just duplicate any item you put into them. So if you put an iron in here, it'll just fill the entire chest with iron automatically and infinitely generate those materials. Um, we have creative chests, which is what this is here. Um, this is just like every single item in the game you can just pick from and it will just infinitely generate it. Like you take some, put these in here. Um, I just take some and we'll just forever infinitely generate it. Very nice. Um, void storage chests, super loaders, which will just fill a blue belt forever instantly. Um, you know, same with the wagons. You have the duplicating cargo wagons, creative cargo wagons, and void cargo wagons. Same as the chest work. Really useful for testing with trains. Uh, fluid sources, fluid voids, boilers, labs, huge uh, roboport coverage. Um, somewhere in here is a roboport, I believe. Up here, this is just going to give you like gigantic coverage. Like, this is insane. Um, and then radars, power, you can even put down enemies now if you want, you know, which is like the same you could do in the editor. Crazy modules, fusion reactors, all kind of stuff in there. Um, also, these active and passive energy sources, that's what I'm using here, just will passively generate whatever energy is needed um, that the thing in the network consumes. And then what I really like are these these wands. So we have these few wands here. This one is magic wand. Um, this is really nice for like clearing terrain. If you hold shift and left click, uh, you can't you can uh, you can see it's like deconstructing. It will just it will get rid of everything. It'll get rid of cliffs. It'll get rid of decoratives. It will get rid of ore patches. Um, it will not, however, get rid of tiles like this. So you can see, um, well, it will now, but well, no, it, won't. it looks like it will. Um, it looks like it will, but it won't. So you, this is how I concreted this and got rid of everything else. Um, this will get rid of build. So you do want to be careful with that. But you know, this will get rid of um, basically everything except the tiles um, here, which is really nice, really useful. Uh, you can also use this to generate stuff like I can just generate swaths of concrete and such. And uh, you can set this in your uh, wand here, the magic wand um, in the creator. You can set this, you know, just choose what you want here. And then the modifier wand, there's all kind of settings. You guys can look at these. Um, I don't use these as much for like testing builds. Um, and then there's just all your cheat settings, your personal cheats. Do you want it on? Are you invincible? Uh, the ones I really like are instant request and instant trash, as well as the instant blueprint, instant deconstruct. Um, so when you saw earlier, when I dumped stuff in my trash, it just instantly got rid of it. This is just really convenient. Same with if, when you request, it's just going to instantly give it to you. Uh, you know, if you don't want to go to a chest and pick it out of there. Uh, and then the instant blueprint and deconstruct is really nice. So the instant deconstruct, just gone, just like that. Kind of like the wand, but it's an actual deconstruction planner and follows those rules aside well almost so this basically works as the wand honestly <laughs> um and then the instant blueprint's really nice so this um will just instantly stamp down any blueprint like you don't have to worry about bots not ghost placing them it'll just put it down you don't even like you don't even really need the resources it'll just put it down um so those are the main ones i like using that are really useful for testing um 
I'm not going to go into everything because it's already been long enough, but there's all kind of stuff. Most of this, I don't think you really need to mess with for build testing. Um, you know, this is basically infinite build distance, super long reach and stuff. So uh, there you go. You can use the editor. It does have some like infinite chests in the editor as well as power sources, but I would just recommend this um, for test world. I don't, I don't think installing a mod should be too much of a problem. And it's just going to give you so many more tools um, that'll make it really really easy to build things and multiply them and test them um, and all that stuff so there you go guys uh, i hope this video was helpful to you uh, both the calculator uh, instructions tutorial in the beginning of it and then this section and uh you know if you weren't convinced already to use modules and beacons hopefully this helped you with that or helped you understand them better and how powerful they can be uh and then you know definitely gave you an idea of the creative mode uh creative mod and uh can get you started with that so, as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you guys seem to really enjoy the first episode, which is awesome. I really appreciate that and your feedback and support on that. And if you did enjoy this one, a like is much appreciated as it helps other people find the video as well and lets me know that you uh, enjoyed it. And if you're new to the channel, unsubscribed, uh, definitely feel free to subscribe and turn on the notifications uh, with the little bell icon to make sure you are notified when new episodes of this and other series on my channel come out. And I would love to hear your feedback down to below. I'm very open to constructive uh, feedback. And, uh, you know, if, if there's stuff in here that you think I should do better or differently in terms of presentation, definitely let me know. Or if there's just let me know what you'd like to see in the series in general. I know people, a lot of people requested trains and stuff that is coming uh i think the next episode and episodes moving forward we will be actually doing a lot of in-game stuff i know earlier this one and most last one was just kind of showing stuff outside of the game and talking um about stuff so we'll start showing like builds train designs i think trains may be the next one um so that's gonna do it thank you so much guys would love to hear your thoughts below and any questions and stuff you have as well leave uh, down below but until next time i look forward to seeing you all and do take care.